So yeah, I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about uh, motivation for Galaxy, why, why we're doing this, what we're trying to achieve, and then some of the features and uh, new updates that are coming. So just by way of motivation, we started Galaxy because we're thinking a lot about what happens when um, research, particularly in areas like biology, rapidly becomes uh, dependent on large amounts of data. And this is a little diagram I like to use that kind of talks about what an experiment looks like. And so at the top we have coming up with an idea and then designing an experiment, collecting data, and then gradually cleaning, analyzing, summarizing, and coming up with results. And so traditionally, you know, what ends up in a publication is this last part here, maybe summarize data, some inference and results. And yet there are so many decisions and important details being made at these earlier stages that really affect the analysis, but that are not well captured in the traditional kind of publication model. Um, and so what we'd like is for a computational analysis to be reproducible, that it is captured in sufficient detail that you know everything that was done and can do it again. This doesn't mean provenance, it doesn't mean generalizability, but we think of this as being an absolute minimum standard for evaluating analysis. And yet, we and many others have found that despite this seeming to be a minimum standard, many analyses are not reproducible, uh, particularly in areas like genomics. There's lots of reasons for this, um, particularly not having access to the software that was used or knowing the versions of software, knowing the parameters, or even having access to the underlying data. And so this is a really significant problem in genomics and data-intensive research in general right now. Um, really, this, this question of identifiability. How do you, when you have an analysis, go back and determine exactly what was done for every piece of that analysis. And so that's really why we have built Galaxy uh, with the goal of addressing this problem. And so we see Galaxy as an accessible analysis system, an environment where a, you, can, you can go and without needing specific informatics expertise, you can run um, analysis tools on very large data sets from tools of a wide variety of types of different analysis uh, fairly easily. And so Galaxy for many years has now been a free uh, web service that we provide. And so at usegalaxy.org, we can um, use the free resources there to analyze uh, data. It's also open source software. And so um, the, you know, I think lots of the things we're going to be you have been using and are going to be using today are built um, using the software that we made available, and so anyone can run their own Galaxy instances and customize them. And what we're really trying to do is build a platform that allows the community to share tools and data types and workflows um, among them. And we're really trying to achieve, in a broad sense, three goals. Accessibility, we want to make these methods available to every researcher that would want to use them. Um, making them as, as easy to use as possible, and transparency, helping to communicate analysis and analysis results in ways that are easy, easy to understand. And then, of course, what I've been talking about, achieving alongside that reproducibility, that everything that has been performed within Galaxy can be reproduced, not just precisely, but also practically, that should be easy to reproduce analysis. And so the core of Galaxy, basically, everything is around the idea of an analysis tool. And so when you work with Galaxy, the, the main thing you're working with, whether it be directly or through workflows, are these analysis tools that encapsulate a particular kind of, of, of analysis with a well-defined interface. The analysis environment then allows you to use these tools, and it automatically and transparently tracks all the details. So what you get now is provenance and reproducibility essentially for free. You don't have to do anything extra just by working in the Galaxy environment. Um, you have that reproducibility. We have the workflow system uh, for creating more complex analysis, bringing together more than one tool, and then sharing 
publication and so on are integrated with the system are um, it's just everything can be shared um, and published. Uh, we've been trying to make this system available to as many people as possible. I'm just going to mention a couple of activities that were engaged in. Um, and so the main Galaxy instance is quite uh, an endeavor because it, you know, I believe we have over 200,000 analysis performed per month there now. And so it relies very much on a variety of different compute resources that mostly have been provided through uh, the United States National Science Foundation. And this is probably most interesting because what it shows you is that this galaxy is actually taking advantage of different kinds of compute resources. And so we can take analysis that are better suited to large memory machines and run them in one place, high throughput uh, types of machines in another place, and galaxy has that flexibility. Uh, we also have provided uh, a number of tools, CloudMan and CloudBridge in particular, that allow for running galaxy on cloud computing environments. And because it is open source software, there are many Galaxy instances uh, around the world. Here, particularly highlighting some that are not particularly genomics centric. Uh, so there's definitely been an expansion into many other domains because the Galaxy platform itself is very general. And so any analysis tools can be plugged into it. So Galaxy then is giving us this abstract description of tool interfaces and precise parameter capture. So that gives us provenance for everything. Now, for this system to be useful, we also need to get large numbers of tools. This is a chat has been challenging. So you can build the system, but you want to get as many tools into Galaxy as you can. And so the um, what helps with that is something called the Galaxy Toolshed. And the Toolshed is a place where tool developers can contribute their tools to the community, and then anybody running Galaxy can get those uh, tools into their own Galaxy. And so the vision is to really grow the tool development community by supporting and nurturing them to provide uh, infrastructure to post all tools, makes it easy to build tools and install in Galaxy, to have some kind of quality oversight. And so there's a group of volunteers called the IUC that help to review tools that are in the tool shed. And then importantly for our reproducibility goal, we version and store every dependency of the tool, and this means we can reconstruct environments exactly um, later. Okay, so that's the real kind of high level overview. Now I just want to focus on some uh, new things or features that are upcoming and where we're going with Galaxy. And so first I just wanted to mention new tools. We've been putting a lot of our uh, time into growing uh, the number of tools that are available in Galaxy. And so, for example, um, we've added about 400 new tools to the main Galaxy server in the last year. And so we now have these little labels, and so you can see tools that are both new and updated. And we maintain the main Galaxy entirely using the tool shed. So that means every single one of these 400 tools can be used by anybody who's running their own Galaxy just by pulling them down from the tool shed. Uh, and so, not only does that mean there's many more tools available in usegalaxy.org, but also to anyone who's adopted Galaxy, now these tools are available. A big focus of our work right now is on user interface improvements, and particularly the focus on large-scale data analysis. We've been actually rewriting the entire Galaxy uh, user interface, although it hasn't visibly changed so much. We've been making it significantly faster, better performance, um, that's, so that's a major effort for us. But we've also been working on um, better user interfaces for working with large amounts of data. Um, so here's just one example. This is the multi-history view that allows you to look at lots of histories at a time. Uh, what we find is now that users might be working with dozens or hundreds of data sets uh, that having many, the ability to use many histories, switch between them quickly, move data around is very useful. Uh, and so this is a view uh, of, of data in Galaxy that people are finding quite useful. Um, we need to be able to think about running analysis over large numbers of data sets. And so uh, for a while now, we've had this idea, this run over multiple data sets. What this is allowing you to do is to take a tool, so rather than running it once, say if I had 50 BAM alignment data sets in my history, I can run in parallel over all of them with just one click. That makes sense for kind of simple collections, 
But as we get into more complicated scenarios, so for example, many sets of paradigm reads with replicates, we need more complicated ways to count to deal with that. And so another um, piece that we've introduced in this, such as history, such as data sets, such as workflows, all throughout Galaxy is the um, data set collections. These are still work in progress, but they've been in, in Galaxy for uh, some time now. And so what this allows you to do is instead of thinking about you're working with a whole bunch of data sets and having to you manage them individually, you group, in this case nine here, is a list of paired data sets. And so now you can treat this as if it's one entity, even though it's actually um, a structured kind of nested group of different data sets. And these operate, these collections can then be used in workflows. And so for listings, we can take existing tools and just map across them. We also have tools that allow you to reduce. So any tool that can take many inputs could take a collection and combine all of the data sets. Um, and so many of the existing tools work well with these collections. Some special structured collections like pair are requiring tool updates, but a lot of that has been done. And so this is really increasing the complexity of Galaxy. Uh, this is showing map and reduce. So if we have a data set collection coming in, we are running the fast cube groomer, which cleans up that data in parallel, and then a short read mapper. And then this merge step takes all of these um, individual aligned read data sets and combines them together. Uh, this is just a toy example, but then we also have things like um, this is showing uh, an RNA seq workflow now using these collections. So if you, with this, we can now build workflows that can work over large numbers of replicates, large number of data sets within replicates, and so on. Um, and really where we're trying to get to is this towards 10,000 samples case. We're improving the workflow the system, the engine, everything in the background. And so what we want is for Galaxy to be a system where you can still analyze a couple of data sets, but you can also scale to analyzing thousands without uh, losing the usability that Galaxy has always had. Uh, as I said, the workflow engine, a big thing we're doing now is improving workflow scheduling. Workflows can now be paused, restarted. We now have the ability to embed a workflow in another workflow. So we have this, this concept of sub-workflows. Um, a lot more to come here. So in terms of what's going on in the next year of Galaxy, this is one of workflows is one of our big areas. Um, we're, as the interface gets more complicated, we're very interested in how we can assist users. And one thing we've been building out are interactive tours. The basic idea here is that you can go to the Galaxy in interface and run a tour. And so now that we have, this is actually a welcome to Galaxy tour that's running. And so right there within the Galaxy interface, you can click next and it will guide you through different ways to use Galaxy, right? So here we're saying, okay, if you would like to upload your data, here's how you can do that in Galaxy. Here's how you can rerun a tool. And these tours are defined entirely in metadata. What that means is that anyone can write additional tours to um, describe how to use, uh, how to perform different kinds of analysis and run them in a Galaxy instance. So we see this as a really uh, great way to do tutorials rather than having a document on and, and your Galaxy separately, we can now integrate that tutorial functionality right into the Galaxy instance. I'm very excited about Galaxy's interactive environments right now. So Galaxy is only one uh, solution to the reproducibility problem, and there have been a few others that have been very uh, of, of great interest lately and successful. One is Jupiter, the um, next phase of what was called IPython Notebook. And it's a different kind of environment. The idea here is that you work within a notebook sort of framework. You can write code and um, perform data analysis in that environment. And so what we wanted to do is bring together Galaxy and Jupyter as uh, tightly as we possibly can. And so this is where um, interactive environments come in. So here's an example of running an IPython notebook inside Galaxy. So we have a data set in our history. This is um, so rna -C. And we can actually load up that data set in the IPython environment. So now we have IPython running inside of our Galaxy. And what we can actually do, so what this get is showing is we're actually pulling a data set right out of our Galaxy history. And this gives me um, 
a handle to that, and then I can actually work with it. In this case, we're going to use some R code to do um, RNA-seq analysis, I, and I can do this interactively right in my web browser. I can create plots interactively. Um, so unlike the traditional Galaxy tools where you are limited by the, to what the capabilities of the tool were, with um, these environments, we can now allow users to have much more flexibility in the kind of analysis that they do. And so we can um, do lots of you know, different kinds of things. Really, there's, there's no limit to what you can potentially um, do within the interactive environment using Python or any of the other um, languages and platforms supported by Jupyter. And then we also can actually save, so that's what Put is doing now, we can save the results of what we've done in this interactive environment right back into Galaxy. And so now we have a new data set in our uh, Galaxy history that was created using our interactive environment. But we can also save the whole notebook itself. And so now we can always go back at a later time to this notebook because it's been saved in our Galaxy history. So there's still more to do here in terms of the provenance. We want more reproducibility. Um, we want to really plug Galaxy's provenance into Jupyter's provenance. But right now, it's already um, added a really powerful feature to Galaxy that we're, um, we're really excited about. Um, finishing up here, uh, getting more a little more developer-oriented just briefly. One of the other things we're really thinking about is how we can make tool development even easier, help people get tools into Galaxy. We've been building a suite of tools called uh, Nemo, and this is basically a utility, set of utilities that help to build Galaxy tools, and so take away a lot of the boilerplate of creating um, the Galaxy tool comps, but also things like helping to um, test tools, um, creating a Galaxy environment automatically for you to run test tools and things like that, and also managing all that interaction with the tool shed. So this is making it a lot easier for people to contribute tools to Galaxy and just to make that tool development process much more smooth. Right now, I'm, something I'm really interested in is packaging uh, software. And so with the Galaxy tool shed, one of the challenges we've had is if you have a tool and it has many, many dependencies, many other pieces of software it uses, how do you package them all and deliver them to a Galaxy? This is really the hardest challenge we've had. And to make this work, you really need um, portability, so the ability to take all of that, the, the, the tools and dependencies, and move them to a new environment. And related to that is isolation. You don't want things to be coupled because that makes them harder to move. And so I'm fairly enthusiastic about a system called Conda and a project called Bioconda. And so this is where Galaxy is going now in terms of our, how we're doing dependency management. We're going to be using Bioconda for creating isolated environments. Um, this is primarily going to function on Linux. Uh, things do work on, on Mac OS X, and Conda does support Windows. But um, there's definitely been a reduction in the number of platforms that are out there in the last several years, and so that helps to make things to deal with the portability problem more. And so what Biocon is doing is it builds on the Conda packaging system, allows us to have multiple versions of software packages to install and easily switch between them. Biocon already has about 936 recipes for software packages in it. And importantly, everything is built in a minimal environment. This relies on some new technologies, particularly Docker, and so what happens is that whenever a new Bioconda recipe is made, it gets submitted to GitHub. That immediately gets pulled down into a Docker container that has nothing in it, essentially nothing in it, and built. And then when built successfully and integrated into the mainline, it gets sent up to Anaconda Cloud. What this means is now these dependencies, because they've been built in these minimal environments, should run in almost any environment. And so this gives us an easy way to get portable dependencies and to assemble them easily. Um, and so that's something that's coming very soon. The support is already there in Galaxy. We're going to be gradually migrating the tool shed toward using Condom more heavily. The other uh, thing we're excited about right now are containers, um, particularly the Docker technology. And so this gives us yet another level of isolation, these lightweight environments that uh, can have their isolation enforced at the OS level. And Docker gives us also an ecosystem for managing these containers. So for, from Galaxy, that means that with Docker, what we can do is run every analysis in a clean container. This really gives us a new level of reproducibility, because we know 
it's isolated and the environment is exactly the same every time. We can archive that container. It's very lightweight, and that means you can go back at any point in time later and recreate exactly that environment. If we add bioconda to the equation, now, because we're archiving binaries, we can take those binaries, we run them on the same base image, and so now we create this stack where we have increasingly precise um, environmental control and thus increasingly precise reproducibility. And so uh, this is what we're really actively working on right now. We see this as the, the future model for Galaxy and really probably all, all workflow systems to achieve uh, complete reproducibility. Uh, so just to finish, I want to mention, if you want to know more about what we're up to, we, so all of our Galaxy development happens in GitHub under this Galaxy project, and we maintain an issue at all times that we call the road route. And this contains our current high-level priorities for the core Galaxy team, all the projects we're working on. You can see this is the current version of the roadmap. Um, that's everything that's up there. Uh, we're probably going to be actually revisiting this tomorrow. We, re we look at the roadmap every release, which is about every three months, and figure out what needs to change, what's been done, what's new. Um, but this, you know, at any time you want to know what the future plans for Galaxy are in the next three months to a year, um, that's all available in the roadmap on GitHub. Um, just want to acknowledge the millions of people who have supported Galaxy and the other uh, work on reproducibility that I've talked about. And uh, thank you. Well, uh, we just mentioned we're having uh, another Galaxy conference uh, coming up, but I think um, what you guys are doing right now is fantastic. Um, I hope um, I hope I hope you enjoy it and learn a lot about Galaxy. And thank you very much for inviting me to speak.